Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspired by dreams. Dot shop. It's a preppy streetwear brand, and we're just trying to keep you guys dressing original and dressing outside of the box. Okay, today's episode, I'm covering the difference between white parents and black parents, and we're just going through the, just the upbringing dynamics of the whole situation. Is it different or is it similar? And what do they have in common, you know, as far as the kids being raised and how is the outcome of this whole situation? All right, so we're just gonna jump right into it. You guys, you know what to do. Leave your comments down below and I'll always get back to you on my morning show, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m., okay? And, if, and I'm always in the comment section too, talking back to you guys. I love the conversations, love you guys, and we got a lot more conversations to go, okay? So let's just jump right into it. Here it is, let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made it. What you made, Mickey? Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. So we can talk about cultural differences in parenting. Okay, Because go ahead. when I don't discipline in the same way that he does, he says I'm a white parent. You're a white parent. So I, I have so many examples of this. But the only time she's not a white parent is when things to turn on her. So one time when she was little, she used to tell Jenna what to do, and she always would say this to me. I want her to have, have autonomy and make her own decisions. She doesn't have to bow down to everything we say, which I thought was I absolutely- I was teaching her to be a boss bitch. No, she wasn't. <laughs> until until Jalen smacked her one day. Tell her about the, the oh, time yeah. Jalen smacked uh, Jalen wanted to watch a Dora DVD. And it was bedtime. She kept, literally, she was put a slamming it in the DVD player. And I was saying no. And she kept doing it. She's like, no, and Jalen, no. We got to go to bed. We got to go to bed. <laughs> no, Jalen, we got to go to bed. When I took it out and put it in the case, Jalen actually hit me. She was like three or four. Smack but I, fl I flipped her ass over <laughs> so quick and beat her ass. But that was really the only time she needed an ass whooping. So, so, she, so she she wasn't playing that white parenting thing at that time. She said she got a little crazy. And I told her that's how I used to get get whippings too. But, you know, I've, I've, I've never spanked her personally. I took all that smack, but I've never spanked her. Yeah, so it's the white parent. But she does get a tongue lashing and she doesn't like that. You must admit when I yeah, talked to yeah. her, she went, like, oh, but God. Yeah. Mike is a white parent when it comes to the freaking dog because he spoils <laughs> that dog. <laughs> He well, gives him way too many treats. I tell Mike, like he talks about me being a white parent with our child, God. but when it comes to this Marlo, my God. My God. Mike is all all Caucasian. This is my guy now. It's my buddy ain't you, Marlo? Huh? Marlo's a good helper. For yeah, you. He is. He gets me around. He makes sure that Mike when she gets when she starts screaming and getting getting angry in the house, he always comes to me and hugs me. He sits in my lap. He gets in between us when she gets a little too sassy. <laughs> my protector. Why do white people adopt black children? I got a question. Why are there so many black children that need to be adopted? A second question is, why do you care who adopts them and what color they are as long as they love that child and raise them right? And lastly, I see color. I see color. But when I see a little baby, I don't go, oh, look at that little white baby or look at that little black baby. These are babies. They haven't been filled with ignorance yet. Let them babies be babies and grow up to be good people. Okay, let's talk about it. Mixed kids who were raised by white mothers versus black mothers. Already I'm seeing comments saying that there is no difference and there's bad on both sides, which is true. There is bad on both sides. Colorism runs rampant within our community. We know that. So we know that there are tons of black women who want mixed children because they want them to be lighter because colorism is eating them alive. But let us not pretend that there isn't a significant difference, generally speaking, between those who are raised by white mothers versus black mothers. There was a mixed creator who made a video specifically on this. I wish I knew who it was. So if you know who I'm talking about, tag them below, but they shared their experience being raised by a white mother, et cetera, et cetera. But the reason I made that comment isn't to talk about the white women because like that's expected. It's to address the black men. We all know that even statistically speaking, it's way more likely for black men to date outside of their race versus black women. It's way more likely for black men to date white women. 
which means it's way more likely for black men to date white women, have children with white women, and allow their white wives to fetishize their children. That was the point I was making. That's a problem. That's a problem. Nobody is saying that black women don't do the same thing. We we all know that that's true. Black women do the same thing. Again, colorism eats us all alive. But you can even notice it on this app. The white women who act a fool, the white women with the fake ass black sense and the caricatures of black women that they try to do, the vast majority of their time, what do their boyfriends look like? They're black men. Like I'm never surprised when I see a racist ass little white girl and then she pans the camera over to her black boyfriend and I'm like, that's why she thinks it's okay for her to do these things because she's being validated by this man who's telling her that it's okay. So in conclusion, let us not pretend that this is not a common theme, okay? Okay. How is it so dark when you're not dark? Yeah, how? How? As somebody with a black mom and white dad, this black wife effect, chef's kiss, needs to be studied on a deeper and more statistical level because these glow ups that I'm seeing with these white men who are with their black girlfriends and wives, it's just so heartwarming and it really hits close to home. And I can happily and proudly say that my father also went through the black wife effect. My mother leveled up my dad in terms of his career. So it was 2001, 9-11 had happened and the job market completely just went downhill and my father lost his job due to this. So my dad became domestic dad. He took care of me, he cleaned the house, he cooked, he helped me with my homework, he dropped me off at school, picked me up while my mother went to work, right? Cause you know, we got the foot on the table. We have to just make sure that things are running smoothly now that he's in this temporary position. My father was job hunting and mind you, my father doesn't have a degree whereas my mother does. Well, my dad sees this job at this oil and gas company for a sales position. And it required that he have a degree, but my father didn't have that. So he was like, no, I can't apply for this job. I don't meet the credentials. But the thing about my father is that he has an extensive sales background and he knows how to talk to people, okay? He's got the personality. He, literally, he, my father could sell you this box of tissue easily. However, my mother was like, boy, please, you gonna apply for this job. I don't care whether or not you meet the academic credentials. You need to believe in yourself. And as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch up your resume. Okay. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to add on to your skills and I'm going to just, you know, spruce it up a bit because black wife effect. I believe in you. I can upgrade you like that Beyonce song. My father at the time had to go back to his old job at a restaurant where he was a manager and he didn't like it, but you know, he said, you know what? I'm just going to go back. If something better comes up, my mother eventually sends up his resume. My dad's like, I'm not going to get this job. <laughs> Tell me why this oil and gas company sees my father's resume and calls him in for an interview. My dad was like, okay, I'm just going to do the best that I can and we'll just See what happens. Goes to the interview. He sells his skills in sales. But mind you, my father doesn't have a degree. The company calls him back for a second interview. And shortly after the second interview, he gets the job at the oil and gas company. All because my mother, a black woman, believed in him. She believed that my man has all these incredible skills. He's sleeping on himself and he needs to tap, tap, tap into his confidence and believe that he can get this particular job. He goes into work on his first day and finds out that this very job at this oil and gas company has a lot of perks that come with it. Or he gets his own company vehicle, which was a Ford F-150. He got his own cell phone, which he doesn't have to pay a bill on. And since it's an oil and gas company, he gets free gas. So whenever he's on the road traveling in his F-150, making calls on the mobile phone that he doesn't have to pay the bill for, he also gets free gas. 
My father is still working at that company to this day and makes very good money. I'm not going to say the figures, but you know, oil and gas, cha-ching. All because my mother, a black woman, believed in him. Now him and my mom paid off their mortgage. They both work very successful jobs. Father works in oil and gas. My mother's an entrepreneur. And they travel three or four times a year. So they're living a pretty good life. As someone who has seen it for 32 years of her life, as the daughter, as a child of a black mom and a white dad, the black wife trend is very much real. I can see why it's called black girl magic for a reason. And I hope and pray that that man is also leveling you up in some way as well, because I see it in my parents every single day. It's been a while. So I want to talk about the big elephant in the room when it comes to mixed people, right? Oh, you can tell who has a white mom and who has a black mom. Yeah, you can. The ones with white moms, a lot of times, they're either so aware, like painfully aware of what it's like having a white mom or so on the other end of the spectrum, like there's no in between. And it's painfully true. The one thing, the major difference I feel like, and I've seen another creator talk about this, is like black moms might drop the ball on like regular parenting shit, like as does everyone else, but they never drop the ball. Uh, they never drop the ball on raising their kids to be confident in themselves as far as their race. Like they never let their kids grow up confused about who the fuck they are racially and ethnically. Like I just don't see it happening. Black women are the most aware of their race and their gender. Like we literally have to be hyper vigilant about how we experience life. And so black women have to raise their kids in a world where everyone else will be trying to tell them who they are. I feel like black moms are like, no, like this is who you are. You need to stand in that. White moms, a lot of the time I just see are so fucking clueless. I'm sorry to say it, but like they have these kids for sport, right? Like they're like, oh, like this black guy is so fucking hot. And wouldn't our babies be so cute? And they raise their kids like not knowing who they are, not knowing how to identify. They raise a lot of times they'll raise their kids around all white people, which is even more confusing. And personally, like my dad also dropped the ball like we can blame him, too. I just feel like. It's not fair. Like I didn't consent to having a white mom. And I wish white women were more careful about who they had kids with. Because you have to transform your entire life. You have to unlearn every fucking thing that you've ever learned. If you want to have a child with someone from a different culture. I would never like, for instance, be with someone who's Asian and be like, but I'm not gonna give up any of my prior cultural practices and you need to assimilate with mine. Like, I would never do that. I would be willing to uproot my entire life to make sure that my kids were accepted, at the very least within their family. A lot of mixed kids with white moms do not get that same, the same grace. They just don't. White moms, not all, because I know some who do the damn thing, but it's very rare. It's very rare. And I just don't see black moms struggling with that. I'm just trying to figure out why history is repeating itself because there's no way that my daughters could be living the same life that I lived when I was in my 20s. Like what? What's happening? What's happening? I did it already. Girl, don't go that way. I know that way. There's nothing down that way. <laughs> don't go that way because I'm just trying to figure out why, sis? This is why I can talk to you the way that I talk to you. This is why I can give you the counsel that I give you because I did it already and it sucked. It was horrible. This is how I ended up with three kids under the age of 24 because I went that way. This is why I ended up in very horrible relationships. This is why I ended up in horrible jobs. This is why I ended up 
with a bad car. This is why. Because I went that way already. And they're not listening. And I, listen, mothers with daughters, I feel you. I see you. I am you. We in this together. I may not know you, but I promise I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you up. Because these kids, these young adults, <laughs> it's triggering. It's triggering. Watching my daughters in their young adult life, it's like watching myself and I cringe at every turn. I cringe at every situation. I cringe at the thought of having to call my father to say, Daddy, I'm so sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could call my mama and tell her how sorry I am. Girl, I am sorry because I gave you a run for your money. Because, baby, when I tell you these teenage girls, I mean, well, that young adult girls <laughs> got me in a chokehold. <laughs> I got to laugh to keep from crying. I must. I must. I must. Because I feel like, I feel like just yesterday I was looking in these little big beautiful eyes that were like mommy I love you and mommy can you show me and mommy can you help me mommy 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 and now mom I'm gonna call you later and it's like three days go by and I don't hear from her or ma I'm, I'm going out and I'm doing my thing or ma I'm paying my bills or ma and mommy don't exist mommy don't exist to these kids so for all you mothers that are that are struggling with your teen, with your 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 daughters, I'm saying teenage, but it's really hard for me to believe that my kids are already in their 20s. It's hard for me to believe that I got to sit back and just let them be adults. I'm not in charge of them no more. I'm not responsible for them anymore. And they got to make their own decisions. Oh, oh, and it's so hard. It's so hard because I know that when I was, when I was 20, 21, 22, couldn't nobody tell me nothing. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. I guess it's my turn. It's my turn. I can't tell these kids nothing. And I just got to lift them up in prayer and ask God to protect them even when they're not with me. I gotta ask God to protect their hearts, protect their minds, help them make good decisions to keep them even when they make the bad decisions. My God. Remain encouraged, Mama. Remain encouraged as you try, as you try to guide your young daughters, your young adult daughters in the right direction. You know, they ain't never lied when they said you could lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink them. Drink it. Oh, baby, it's hard to lead them, too. <laughs> it's a struggle. You're like, get your butt over here. Get over here. <laughs> and they're like, no, nah, I want to go this way. You're like, girl, ain't nothing over there. Just listen. <laughs> oh, I'm so overwhelmed. You're going to be all right. Remain encouraged, mama, because I see you and I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm going to clear up the confusion of the black SUV mom versus the white SUV mom. The black SUV mom has undiagnosed ADHD. She forgets to put gas in her car and she has ran out of gas at least five times in her life. She doesn't know where her um, insurance card is. If she were to get pulled over, she's not sure if it's like an app now or if it's in a piece of paper. She thinks about that, but she doesn't actually bother to ever check. She goes through drive throughs and car washes and she loses her windshield wipers because she forgets to hit the button that stops them from flying off. So she has to buy new windshield wipers for her black SUV. She also has kids that have ADHD, at least one. She always has crumbs in her car and she has granola bar wrappers inside of her car. And she usually has a husband that yells at her for not taking care of her car. She also has a whole bunch of returns sitting in her car in a bag. And she 
never returns them. She just keeps forgetting about them because she doesn't actually see the bag that's in her back seat. So she forgets to actually search it. My phone fell. <laughs> she usually finds like a nice guy that lets her park in the driveway. And um, while she's like rolling in to go pick up her kids, so she's not late. And she always feels like people are watching her and she feels like people are judging her. Okay, a few things I could say with this whole upbringing dynamic. We all have to remember as people, when kids come into this world, they didn't come into something or problems that they caused. All the problems that's caused in this world is because of us. So how we bring them into this world and how we raise them, if we raise them out of love, understanding, compassion, having empathy, the rest of the journey is up to them to continue it. So just being there for them in the times that they need you to be, instead of drilling them with all of this history of what's been going on when they wasn't even here, I think the best way of going about it is just raise your kids out of love. You guys let me know what you think about the whole dynamic of raising a kid that if black or white. You guys let me know down in the comments. And I'll get you know I always get back to your, your guys' comments and love you guys. Till next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.